bear, Oreo. You want some laser engraved dinosaur nuggets? Two trees reached out to me to see if I wanted to do a review of their laser. I said, sure, why not? It's the TTS 55. So let's go ahead and see what's in this box. It's uh, pretty light, as you see right there, TTS 55 EUS. That just means it has a US power adapter in it. All right, so let's crack this thing open. Oh, we get two boxes in a box. All right. And that looks like that's about it that's in there. So what do we have in this small box? All right. Well, we have the 5.5 watt laser diode module. We have the US power supply. And we have a, um, I guess you want to call it a shim. It's a focused height shim thing. It's made out of like aluminum. And we have the mount for it. It's a 3D printed mount. Showing off some of their 3D printing skills, I guess. Actually, it's pretty nice. Nicely printed. And now it's time to dive into the bigger box. Got some foam on the top. Okay. We'll toss it somewhere. And now we have a, a Ziploc with an instruction manual. And, of course, I would suggest always reviewing the instruction manual. And then you can get a dear customer card in there. So basically just walks you over on how to assemble the whole thing and with some technical information as well. Next, we have the big piece of foam. This is one layer. Not the biggest fan of all this foam, but it is what it is. Here we have a pretty long USB connection cable. It's nice that they're this long. And next we have a 32-bit control box, control board with Wi-Fi. That's pretty nice. And since it has Wi-Fi, it most likely will have an SD card slot on the top. And we have this mystery wood thing. I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, please comment below. I just don't know. And we have the laser head carriage. It actually has a thumb screw to adjust the height on the top. We'll go over that a little bit later. And then next we have the tools and accessories. We have that micro SD in there and the reader. And then the next bag, uh, we have all the screws and fasteners. And those screw bags actually are labeled for each step, which is really nice. Now of all the lasers I reviewed, this is the first time I've ever seen one with a label for the safety goggles. 200 to 450 nanometers. That's an ODS plus minus five. I assume that's the range. And what do we have here? Ah, we have the, the Y axis right to frame times one. That means it's only one of them. And that's because it has two steppers on that one. And then we have two extrusions here. That's the, for the Y axis. That is the front and the back. And then we got four feet or standoffs or risers. But they call them corner foot pads. Seems like every manufacturer has their own way of labeling those. And then, hey, that's a first for me. Seeing a well, not a first, second time. Seeing a tensioner on the X axis. And then we have the other stepper motor for the other Y. So, and a lot of this is pre-assembled, which is nice uh, because we have it on at least on the belts are already pre-ran. That's a first. I haven't seen that before at least for assembly. And the last but not least is your X carriage. So this is, they call it the X axis of beam. Now the assembly on this is actually quite long. They say it's 60% pre-assembled, but I really do not think so. Um, first, I'm just laying out all the extrusions in the correct order, and you're gonna send one screw through on each corner. Now do not over tighten them, just make them just barely loose but snug because we're going to then put these feet on each corner and there's an access hole to tighten that screw once you put these through. So it's pretty straightforward for this process. What I'm doing now is just uh, loosening or tightening the eccentric nuts so the Y carriage will move nice and freely. Now this was uh, the most 
I would say the biggest headache. The next gantry just has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, there's just a lot of parts to put in and a belt that's pretty difficult to route. But if you're really curious, I will put a link in the description below so you could review on Two Trees site on how to assemble it. It's about a 15 minute video. Now they did take into account some cable management, which was nice. And these looms are, you know, as you can see, stand up pretty high. So there's really nothing to accidentally engrave in the workspace. So it's nice that they actually did that. And of course, disclaimer time. Yes, safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. And I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. And it's finished, it's assembled. And still pretty shocked that a 300 by 300 is dual Y steppers, but I mean, I've assembled 400 by 400 that's only had one. But anyways, all you have to do now is insert the SD card since it has a Wi-Fi enabled connection here, and that's where it would write to. Now let's configure Lightburn. Choose a Gerbil, then Serial USB, name your machine, hit next. Oh, well, after you type in 300 by 300, then you're going to hit next, and um, I can just go to the front left, and I'm going to make sure Auto Home is off. And then I'm going to hit Finish. And then I'll just hit OK. And then once that's done, you go to the lower right, and you're going to pick your laser, and I then we're all done. Pretty easy. Now I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Well, look no further than PCB Way. Let's First, start by clicking on the $5. Yes, $5 can get you started. That is for a single layer PCB. But are you looking maybe for advanced PCB? Or a rigid or flex PCB? <laughs> well, maybe you're just looking for assembly. <laughs> or, yes, or SMD stencils. But that's not it. PCB Way can also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and now injected molding. Wow. PCB Way is your one-stop shop. I mean, really. Now, I really would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now, let's continue on to the Two Trees Laser Engraver. Now, focusing is pretty easy. First, we're going to remove this magnetic shield. Yeah, that's pretty unique. Look at that. It just slides off. It just self-aligns. Man, now that is pretty darn ingenious. I would like to see if others would do that. Loosen the thumb screw on the side. And then there's a, a height adjustment for your Z on the top. You just twist it. You know, I think other manufacturers should take note of that. Now I'm just going to slide my material underneath. I'm going to use this shim thing, aluminum block. And now I'm just going to adjust the height so it could just, just so ever so slightly go underneath the corner. Now I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. And once it barely touches, we're going to tighten it back up. And so it locks it in place. We're going to remove our shim here and put our shield back on. Then we are ready to start testing the laser. Pretty darn easy. Commence laser engraving sequence. Let's take a look at what I engraved here. Let's start out with this cutting board. I used tempera paint because it easily washes off and um, did this at 1500 millimeters per minute at a power of 90%. Yeah, it's not definitely my nicest brush job on air. You can see that was a little bit too thick here on my overlaps. And uh, yeah, typically I do a lot better. And then this D. Had a little bit of a blob on here. Let me see if I can focus it better. Yep, and it didn't burn through that blob. Pretty disappointed, I have to say. I'm usually a lot better than this. Hmm. It's definitely not the laser's fault. It's all my fault, but it's permanently etched. So I then said, okay, let me try it one more time. And frankly, to be honest with you, I didn't fare much better. This did etch better, 
a lot better, but you can see by the pig's rear end, it looks really good, but then it was too thick by the front. Oh well, but at least it was a nice clean engraving. Next, we are going to check the cut through. I did this United States, and it's pretty darn fragile. This was done at 200 millimeters per minute at 90% power, and it did it nice and cleanly. But also I used that board, you know, the honeycomb board, and it just makes the world of difference without using any type of air assist or anything. I'm trying to get this to focus, it's not doing very well. There we go. I mean, everything just popped out, but there was that fragile piece right there on the side, and it broke a little bit on me. But it is such a nice, clean engraving. And uh, we can now take a look at the other part. I mean, even that's nice. Look at that. Definitely get yourself a honeycomb bed if you're gonna do pass-through um, you know, cutting. Link will be in the description below. Now, I did this uh, dog tag. Of course, bear is the best. And this is stainless steel. And this was done at 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Now, I think I could done a little bit less power. I mean, it it cooked it. I, it warped it, actually. Could have done a 150 on the speed and most likely would have still done a, a decent job. So, yes, it can mark. I won't say engrave, but mark stainless steel. And now look at this cutting board. <laughs> this came out fantastic. This was at 1800 uh, millimeters per minute at 80% power. And this is bamboo. I mean, this was really, really nicely done here. I mean, I, this was actually the bad side because I was just testing it. I didn't think it was going to come out this perfect. I, I mean, the etching is just, or engraving, because it is engraved. You can see how deep it went. It's just a nice, clean burn. And uh, couldn't be happier with it. So where are my thoughts of this, uh, you know, two trees? Um, I think it's a solid little machine because, well, it's actually pretty large. It's a 300 by 300. Like the fact that it has the dual Y stepper motors, some cable management. And, you know, it's, it has Wi-Fi. I didn't test it in this video, but it just does what it's supposed to do. Now, it does have a, a few things I would like to point out here. It is what I want to call material pass-through. There's lots of blockages around here, around the perimeter. The back has a 50 millimeter height and that's okay, but where the stepper motors are, it's not that great. I mean, you have 10 millimeters, so you can't really put material through it. And the board accepts limit switches and there weren't any installed. And then I found a Wi-Fi antenna just shoved in there. I mean, honestly, that should be taken out and then you could just attach it to an aluminum extrusion. I mean, that is basically the only drawbacks I could see of this machine. It does what it's supposed to do. It engraves beautifully. It's just that the, you know, the material will be nice to be able to pass through it. And basically all you need to do then is just raise it up more. So if two trees could just offer a riser kit for it, I think that would solve most of the issues. But I know what you're asking. What about food? How about some dinosaur nuggets? Yes, dinosaur nuggets. Huh, I mean, yeah, of course I have dinosaur nuggets, don't you? I mean, it's a, like a family tradition. Now, I can't say they, they look like real dinosaurs, but I think that's a T-Rex. And I'm just wondering, how does a T-Rex taste laser engraved? It tastes pretty darn good. I will give that a definite pass. And what do we have here next? That's a really funky looking shape. Somehow I believe chicken isn't supposed to be shaped like this. But that is a, I guess, a pterodactyl. And how does a pterodactyl taste? Tastes like a pterodactyl. Like chicken. I mean, I guess it's a dinosaur, right? A chicken is a dinosaur? But now, let's check out this. Oh, yes, this has to be a brontosaurus. Yep. And I think I'm going to give these brontosauruses to some. Oh, what's this? We got the bear and we got Oreo. That, let's see. High five, bear. Good boy. Good boy. 
and Oriole's on-screen debut. There, high five. Oh, good girl. There you go. And she runs off. If you are interested in purchasing this two trees, TTS55, um, there will be a link in the video description below, along with any special promo codes that might be available at this time. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in to Tripod's Garage.